Hey guys, it's here coming with another video, and this one today is going to be about Elisande in the Nighthold. This is going to be a very special video because in this one I'm going to be running a Haunt build, and Haunt is a build that not a lot of Warlocks have tried. They've kind of just disregarded it as a poor talent choice, and I think it is not a poor talent choice. While it might not be the best option, I definitely think it is very viable, and if you do want to run it, I think that you can run it and you should run it because you can see on this boss fight just how good it is and just how viable it can be when there's consistent ads spawning and you can use haunt to get all of those resets and dump all of your damage into different targets okay so first let's talk a little bit more about the mechanics on this boss fight and then we will talk about how to deal damage on the boss so on elisand in the first phase there are three phases on this boss fight there are going to be two adds that spawn there's going to be a pink and a blue ad and when they die they drop these circles on the ground one pink and one blue and when you run into the pink one you're going to get a cast speed increase and when you run into the blue one you're going to get a cast speed decrease so basically one speeds up time and one slows down time and this is not only important for you to do more damage with this cast speed buff it's also important because she does an ability called arcanetic ring and what happens is there's orbs that spawn around the room and kind of collapse towards the center and when they move through these circles they either slow down or speed up corresponding to the color of the circle and this allows a gap to form for you guys to move through and this gap that you move through allows you not to get hit and therefore you won't die and therefore you get to continue the fight and that's really really good so make sure you guys are killing these ads they're very high priority now after you kill her she will reset time go back to full health and start phase two now in phase two all of the mechanics from phase one uh, still exist within the boss fight there are a few new mechanics as well though and the new mechanic that exists in phase two is orbs will spawn from the sky and come down and try to hit the ground now what needs to happen is Parties, uh, part of your raid group needs to spread out about the room and stand under these falling orbs and if you stand under these falling orbs what ends up happening is instead of dealing a massive burst of AoE to the raid group if it was to hit the ground instead it will just hit you do a little bit of damage to you and not end up doing the damage to your raid so make sure you're soaking that in phase two same mechanics as phase one aside from that kill her again and then you will start phase three so she'll start at full health again and this time she'll have all of those mechanics plus two new ones and the two new mechanics are going to be uh, arrows are going to shoot out from her designated at specific players and all that's going to happen is a beam will shoot at them so just don't stand in the line of the beam and then also she's going to give debuffs out onto your players and what you need to do is make these debuffs tick down at different times and the way that you do that is either you stand in a blue circle or into the pink circle and this will either speed up or slow down the rate of the debuff ticking on you and if you can do that you're going to end up taking uh, a lot less damage when these debuffs expire and you're not going to wipe your raid group when uh, they all go off at the same time if you're able to separate the time differential of which they go off. So that is the mechanics of the boss fight. That's how you end up wanting to play it. Let's talk about the build and let's talk about how you want to be playing it on this boss fight and abusing Haunt to the best of your ability, okay? So the build that I'm playing is going to be an absolute corruption soul effigy siphon life haunt build. The reason I'm playing effigy is just to get that increased shard gen and I'm not playing contagion because I just feel like with all the ads that are spawning I get a lot of value from absolute corruption on the boss and on my effigy. <clears throat> so that's the reason I'm doing this spec. Um, haunt felt very good on this boss surprisingly. I didn't think it was going to be that good. I just wanted to try it out. Uh, because no one's really tried haunt right? No one's really tested it and it actually ended up feeling very very good on this boss and the way that you play haunt is a little bit different than you play Malefic Grasp. Um, the way that you play Haunt is when an ad does spawn, you want to make sure that you have a high shard count, you want to make sure that you have Haunt off cooldown, and you want to make sure that your dots are refreshed on the effigy and the boss to your best of your ability, okay? So once this ad spawns, what you do is you cast uh, Agony and then Corruption on it, you cast one UA and then you Haunt, and then you UA as many times as you can into that Haunt, and then after that, you can just go onto the boss, you can go onto the other ad and start start refreshing your dots again. And the way that this is a better than Malefic Grasp in that sense is with Malefic Grasp, when an ad spawns and you UA it, you're kind of committed to only attacking that ad simply because you have to spend the time sitting there, drain drain souling to get the additional 70% increased damage whereas with haunt what you can do is you can kind of fire and forget okay you can get, put your dots on the ad you can put all of these uas onto the ad with the haunt you know it's going to die right you're doing that increased damage with the uas and then you can just go onto the other ad you can go onto the boss and you can start prepping them for their haunt you can start multi dotting so you get to increase your dps via that route as well not only the burst window with the haunt which makes it a very very useful ability okay 
So the way that you burst with Haunt is you put your Agony, your Corruption on the enemy, you uh, precast a, a UA, then you cast Haunt, and then you UA a few more times, and then you just kind of forget about it. You UA, you know, four or five times. If you want, you can go back and shove another one just before the Haunt ends. It's up to you because you do need to save shards for the next Haunt burst as well because when the ad dies, it does reset normally. So there's a couple situations in this boss fight where you're going to want it to be save Haunt where you're using it uh, three times, and there's some times where you're only using it two times, and let's talk about that, okay? So during this boss fight, there's going to be times where obviously the adds are spawning. Now, sometimes there will only be uh, one ad, there will only be one blue ad, and sometimes there will be two ads, there will be a blue and a pink ad, and this happens at different times in the fight. Generally, the way that it works is first she spawns two ads, and then she spawns one ad, and then she spawns two, and then she spawns one, and it kind of cycles around in this sort of way. So the way that you deal with that with haunt is you're going to be wanting to haunt um, the blue ad first, because that is the one that you'll be killing first. And doing your dump into him, hopefully your guild is able to kill him before the timer runs out on Haunt, and then what you're going to want to do is transfer all of that damage over onto the pink ad via Haunt and via Shard resetting, either be it by, you know, your Agonies just simply giving you the Shard gem, or you're drain soling the ad with a UA on it in order to get those Shard refunds back. So you're going to be UAing the uh, blue ad and then transferring that damage with the Wrath of Consumption onto the pink ad, and then once the pink ad dies, you will get another Haunt reset, you get your haste buff, and then you dump all that damage back into the boss okay after that a new blue ad will spawn and then you just do the same thing you uh, agony corruption it haunt dump a bunch of uas into it and then just pump that all that damage back into the boss with the haunt so the efficiency of this build really comes from the haunt up time with the low cooldown you can end up getting 30 to 45 seconds of haunt duration with only a 15 second cooldown which is absolutely amazing it's really really good it's really really efficient and it's really a lot a lot of damage okay so let's talk a little bit about the way you want to be reaping on this fight and how you're supposed to be saving your uh, soul shards, okay? So basically the idea is, is you're not going to be UAing outside of Haunt for the most part simply because adds spawn so frequently throughout this fight. Um, during your Haunt cooldown is really going to be the time where you're saving and really going to be the time where you're not using many of your soul shards, okay? So whenever Haunt is off cooldown, especially on a fight like this where there's so many adds spawning frequently, don't UA outside of Haunt, okay? You're going to find yourself UA starved, you're going to find yourself shard starved throughout the fight. It's not going to be a good time for you. You're going you're gonna to hate yourself for doing it. So make sure you're only saving UAs for when the adds are spawning during this fight, okay? Uh, for when your haunt is off, off cooldown, and then obviously you can use UAs onto Elisande after both adds are dead and you get that haunt reset back. And another thing, if you're struggling with a shard gen, another thing you can do is when the ad is about to die, make sure you drain soul it, make sure you have a UA on it, you get that free damage because of the shard refund, and not only that, you also get the shard refund from casting that drain soul. So there's a lot of different ways for you to increase your shard gen on this fight, which is really, really good. And if you're able to do that, you're going to be able to utilize those haunts a lot, lot better simply because that 30% damage is really quite useless without using a bunch of UAs into it because that's what you want to be affecting, right? UA is your harding hit his dot, harding, hardest hitting dot, and you really want to be able to buff that by 30% on the boss. Otherwise, um, this build just isn't going to be effective for you, okay? So you see every single time an ad is up on this fight, every single time I'm doing the, uh, I'm dotting it, I'm getting my haunt buff on it, I'm getting my UAs on it first, and then I'm dumping into it, and the ad will die and give me my reset, okay? Let's talk a little bit about the reap usage, okay? You don't want to be reaping outside of haunt, okay? Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. Do not reap outside of haunt. And the reason you don't want to reap outside of haunt is because haunt is a 30% damage increase, okay? And let's say reap is a 20% damage increase, roughly speaking, okay? This means that these effects will multiply together to give you a much more than a 50% benefit, right? You don't want to be getting the 30% benefit at one point and then a 20% benefit when you don't have any of your UAs out. So the way that I like to do is I just save reaps for whenever my haunt is off cooldown. I save my reaps and then when I do my haunt burst, I'm just pressing reap every single time my haunt is up. Okay, guys? So that's how you want to deal with this boss fight. You want to be dealing with it by saving your haunts for the adds, saving your UAs for the adds, getting those resets, and then transferring that damage back into the boss or... Um, onto another ad if there is another ad available. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope it kind of showed you how to utilize the haunt build um, and I'll see you guys next time.